family. One of the things I want to be very clear is that those vicissitudes, those challenges that people face, they affect every area of life. They affect everybody in life. And so people may be able to heal even if they've never been incarcerated or don't know someone who's been incarcerated. So I don't want you to feel like this is only limited to people who have been incarcerated. But the theory behind this, again, is that peer support, peer education, peer learning is more effective than anything else. People who have been through it, know it, get it, can identify it in a way. There's the deinstitutionalization that needs to happen of just learning a different way. If you've been doing the same thing the same way for 15, 16, 17 years, and now you have to come home and do something different, things are moving really quickly. There are people who went to prison before we had cell phones and come home and have no idea how to operate a cell phone. That could be <clears throat> traumatic. There are people who I had in my groups who didn't know how to, were afraid to use their ATM card because when they were kids, they were embarrassed having been on welfare. So there are support systems that are necessary. We will also be offering you practical steps. How People say, well, how do I get over the pain? Some people say, just let it go. Well, how do I let it go? There's a series of why questions that's going to help you get to the bottom of things. And that's what's necessary. We need to, sometimes people want to get over it. They just don't know how. And so for tonight, I'm going to ask a series of questions. And the first one I'm going to ask my audience is, what would make this group, this journey, this facility, this space, a place that would make you feel comfortable to come back, but not only come back, but to really share your experience and seek help in this place? What would that be? You. Me? Mm -hmm. Pre please elaborate. You've always been honest. Okay. And uh, like you say, you know about the prison system. And we know you're here to help us. And, uh, but like I tell everybody that, that I, when I speak about you, I tell them, She's very intelligent, but when she talks to you, she talks to you on your level. And that means a lot to me. You know, I don't like people hanging over the top of my head, and I don't want nobody to be below me. Absolutely. Yeah, and what you said about when you come out here, the normals between inside and outside, because you know I was raised from 11 up. Yes. And uh, inside, if you're in there for murder, mm -hmm. that's common. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody kind of expects it. But then you come out here and you have to tell them you were in there and mm -hmm. you were in there for murder. It's like it's some. Mm -hmm definite thing, you know, like, whoa, what this? Right. And to me, it don't mean nothing, you know, right. because that's what I was. Mm -hmm. But out here, it's different. Right. But in there, it's a norm. So, you know, that kind of gets you sometimes. So Because they look at you different. So what I'm hearing you say is that the ability to speak on your level, speak to you on your level, and to see you as a human being and respect you as a person yeah. is the thing that will help to make this a safe space. Right. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate that. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have somebody who had been in a group that I facilitated. I know that I have been successful in CIW, California Institution for Women, to be able to do that. I was not sure how I would go from a small group because at first I only had 25. And then I grew to facilitate a group of 80. And the smaller group of women were concerned, how are you going to keep this a safe space in here? 
How are we going to feel heard? How are we going to feel a part of anything if there are that many people? And I was able to do that. But again, I don't want to assume that I could do that here. I don't want to assume that it's the same set of circumstances here. I want to make sure. So um, with that being said, I would like to ask you, um, what do you think I can do to make sure that this is a safe space? That's easy to do by just being being caring about someone. And you can show them like he's saying that you, he knows you care. And people that come and are constant in our lives, those of us that are formerly incarcerated, they we understand that they do care because you don't have to be around us. It's just like he said, people they they frown upon us, they move away from you. When I came home, I was so happy to be home. I used to just be by people and say, well, hi, I just got out of prison. I'm really happy to be home. And they told me to stop doing that because <laughs> people went back away from you. Yes. And they said, get, let them get to know you. And then if you want to share that, because I was just, I was ecstatic to be home. Okay. I really was. But that is, it's scary for some people. And actually, when I left, uh, I was in Dublin. And when I went to the airport, I didn't know about taking your shoes off and stuff. So I said to the lady, why why do we have to take our shoes off? And she was like, you had to, you do that. I said, you go to the airport. She said, where have you been? I said, oh, I've been in prison. <laughs> I said, and um, I just, I'm, I'm going to camp now to finish my, I had been in prison 10 years then, I had seven more years to do. And I said, I'm going to do my, my time in camp now. And so she said, oh, how nice. And I kid you not, like probably three seconds later, she tapped me and said, it was nice meeting you, but I'm going to go stand over in this line. <laughs> she actually did that. Wow. And so, but I mean, we, we do scare people just by the fact that they hear the word prison. One of the things that that reminds me of is to say this, particularly when you bring up murder. One of the reasons it's easier, it's easy for me to be comfortable in the environment around people is as an 18 year old I was in a situation and I was so irate um, a, a, a girl that I was friends with in high school I found out that she had stolen something from my mother and I can distinctly remember I can remember when I realized that she had stolen it I was in the financial aid office and when I realized what it was I went I, I went I blacked out like I could see red if you ever close your eyes really really tight and you see red blinking like dots coming at you I was gone and I remember periodically I would I obviously went to sit in front of on the steps in front of her dorm room to wait for her and I had a pipe. I don't know where I got the pipe. I don't know. I don't know how long. I can only surmise how long I was sitting there waiting for her. Because when I came to, after she came up the stairs and gave me back what she stole, and I went downstairs, I know what time that was. The scary thing is, I was 18 years old. I would not have been able to help defend myself because I don't know where I got the pipe. I don't know how long I...